Welcome to AP Environmental Science. In this video, we are going to talk briefly about the phenomena known as El Nino and La Nina. Now, these are two overall global weather patterns that are really driven by changes in the trade winds. So think back to our discussion on global wind patterns. But these impacts on the trade winds also impact ocean circulation. So I want to first talk a little bit about the ocean gyres and then we will get into the impacts and the mechanisms behind El Nino and La Nina. When we look at ocean circulation patterns, you will notice that the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere have what are called ocean gyres. And these are large scale water circulation movements. And you will see in this diagram that the surface waters in the northern hemisphere tend to circulate or move in a clockwise direction, whereas the surface waters in the southern hemisphere tend to move in a counterclockwise direction. You will also notice that along the western coast of several continents, you are going to find what's called upwelling zones, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But what you're seeing here is this overall pattern of movement. When you are studying, you need to know that the ocean gyres move clockwise in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. Now, if we dive into upwelling here a little bit more, you will see that upwelling is really just this upward movement of ocean water. So instead of that water moving in a lateral direction, it's actually moving from the bottom of the ocean all the way up to the surface. And what happens here is it mixes the water. And in the bottom of the ocean, that is where all of the nutrients from the dead and decaying organic matter are really accumulating. So with upwelling, we are bringing all of that nutrient-rich water up to the surface. And this really drives the primary productivity in the marine ecosystems. Now, there are two ways that upwelling can really occur. Now, it can occur far from shore when surface currents are actually moving away from each other and drawing that water in opposite directions. So that creates a little bit of a pocket or a void where that water from underneath is going to be pulled up to fill that space of where that surface water is being pushed away from. But more commonly, upwelling occurs along the shores, particularly the western coast of continents that have some steep mountain ranges near the shoreline. So what happens is longshore wind or wind moving away from the shoreline is going to pull that surface water away from the coast. And again, what's going to happen is this cold nutrient rich water is going to be pulled up to fill that void from where that warm water was pulled away from. And again, this is helping to cycle the nutrients. So what does this have to do with El Nino? So El Nino is a phenomena that happens every few years in the Pacific Ocean. And normally the trade winds blow from the east to the west. And as these trade winds blow from the east to the west, they are pulling that surface water away from the shore of the continent and that drives normal upwelling. However, in an El Nino year, those trade winds actually weaken or even reverse directions. And what happens is that actually stops upwelling taking place in those locations. So if we take a look at a normal year versus an El Nino year, in a normal year, that warm water is pulled from the Eastern Pacific all the way over to the Western Pacific near the Southeast Asian islands and Australia. So this leads to some rather warm and wet weather in um, Southeast Asia and Australia with some kind of colder, more mild weather events in South America. Now, in an El Nino year, that is disrupted and we have all of this warm water tends to accumulate in the Eastern Pacific, particularly near South America. And this really leads to warmer winter temperatures in North America. So if we look at the effects of El Nino, this primarily is a decrease in nutrients in that surface water off the coast of Western South America. And that can lead to significant 
declines in primary productivity and declines in fish populations. So people that rely on fishing as their food source or as their main source of income are going to have some pretty serious negative impacts during an El Nino year. This can also change the weather patterns in about two thirds of the world. So I want you to take a moment, take in this map that I posted here and jot down some of the overall trends. Particularly pay attention to what happens in North America and Southeast Asia, as these are the two locations that the College Board tends to pick at when determining the impacts of El Nino and La Nina. Now La Nina is actually the opposite of El Nino. So what happens here is instead of those trade winds weakening and reversing, during La Nina, we have extremely strong trade winds that really amp up that upwelling and cause it to push a whole bunch of warm water towards Southeast Asia. And then we have very cold, very nutrient rich water off the coast of Western South America. Now, as a result, we also have some other side impacts. We have more Atlantic hurricanes. We have much colder winters in Canada and the Northeastern US. However, the southeastern and southwestern United States are actually a lot warmer and drier during La Nina, which means we have more wildfires. And that's really devastating to these communities. We also have a whole bunch more torrential rainfall in Southeast Asia during La Nina years. So this brings significant monsoons. So again, take a moment, take in this diagram, write down the overall trends, particularly North America and Southeast Asia, and how they are impacted by La Nina events. So in summary, after watching this video, and I know I went quickly, you should be able to describe the normal ocean circulation patterns associated with gyres and upwelling, particularly what causes upwelling and where it results. You also need to be able to describe the environmental changes and effects from El Nino and La Nina. So be able to describe what happens with the trade winds and changes in local weather patterns as a result. Now there are several other fabulous resources out there with animations and diagrams that go into these. I strongly encourage you to take a little time to check those out. And I hope that as you watch this video, you were able to learn something.